We have all heard the predictions about how the world will end, and what will be the cause of human extinction. An incurable illness, global warming, a nuclear war, whatever you think it could be, you might be surprised that there have actually been times in the past where we have been close to being erased from the planet. So here are five of the closest calls we've had to human extinction, where if things went just a little different, we wouldn't be here right now. Toba Volcano 75,000 years ago, Indonesia's Toba Volcano erupted. It's considered to be the largest eruption of the last 2 million years. It spewed up to 3,000 cubic kilometers of ash, unleashed millions of light-blocking particles, and the catastrophic event would have cooled the planet and reduced rainfall, killing off plants and creating a massive food shortage for humans and animals. It's thought this changed the course of human history and severely reduced the human population almost to extinction. The eruption reduced the global temperature by up to 3.5 degrees Celsius, and in some places it's even thought to have dropped as much as 20 degrees. And although some researchers disagree with this, it's also thought to have caused a global volcanic winter of 10 years due to the thick vapour in the air blocking out the sun's heat. It deposited an ash layer approximately 6 centimetres thick that covered the whole of South Asia, and apparently a few lucky monkey species, tigers and cheetahs managed to recover from just the few that remained. But what's interesting is that researchers have said that there could have been other unknown species that did not survive and became extinct. At the time of the explosion, genetic research has shown that the number of humans dropped to a couple of thousand, and some researchers even say there could have been as little as 40 breeding pairs remaining. Although we do not have 100% proof of exactly how many humans survived, it's incredible to think that the entire human population was definitely reduced to a small size. And now we have over 7 billion humans who are descendants from that very small population that survived the eruption 75,000 years ago. So imagine if there were no survivors after the volcano, or if those that remained died off, that could have been the end of the human race. You may have heard of the Atom Smasher, also known as the Large Hadron Collider, that sits on the border between France and Switzerland. It's a 17 mile long underground tube lined with more than 9,000 magnets, designed to smash particles together at incredibly high speeds. Its purpose is to help solve mysteries about the Big Bang, the origins of mass and other physics questions. It's the largest particle accelerator ever built, and at its launch it was feared by many that it could cause the end of the world. It was thought the machine would create a black hole that would swallow up the earth, sucking everything up into something the size of a fingernail. The fear was so great that even legal challenges were launched to try and halt the project in fear it would destroy the planet. A spokesperson for the campaign to stop the test said that it's not possible to know what the outcome of the experiment will be, and that even CERN scientists concede that there is a real possibility of creating destructive theoretical anomalies such as miniature black holes. One of the physicists behind the actual experiment also said, We predict that gravity can leak into extra dimensions, and if it does, then miniature black holes can be produced at the Large Hadron Collider. But Stephen Hawking intervened, reassuring the public that in his opinion the machine was not capable of seeding a black hole that would swallow up the Earth, saying that what the machine is capable of is feeble compared to what goes on in the universe, stating that the world will not come to an end. Well, on September the 10th, 2008, the world's largest and most powerful accelerator was switched on, and nothing happened. Despite all of the end of the world headlines, a microscopic black hole was not triggered and it did not devour the Earth. Soon after the initial startup, the machine was shut down due to some technical problems, and recently started up again in April 2015, scheduled to run at maximum power, twice that of its first run. So, we are all still here to tell the tale, but do we really know what this machine is capable of? When we're talking about universe mysteries, creating big bangs and such, you know that anything goes. So although it didn't happen, the probability of it creating something that could destroy the planet certainly wasn't zero. The Ebola outbreak in West Africa caused a massive fear of a global crisis, one of the biggest scares we have had in years, but it doesn't compare to the plague. Due to the time periods it was around, poor hygiene and the lack of treatment, the plague was one of the deadliest and uncontrollable diseases ever. It's first thought to have originated in China and was spread by infected fleas living on rats. 
It struck in three major pandemics, the most devastating being the second, which started in the 14th century and carried on right up to the 19th century. During those times, the plague had the potential to wipe out the entire human race, and at the time, people thought that was going to be the outcome. The disease existed in two main varieties, one contracted by flea bites and the other airborne, but it could also be caught by coming into contact with bodily fluids of those who were infected, and once infected, death came within a few days. Things got really bad. It wiped out half of China's population, 60% of Europe's, and one-eighth of Africa's. It killed most doctors and thousands of villages were abandoned. All in all, it's estimated to have killed up to 200 million people. Luckily for the human race though, transport at that time was very limited, so the spread of the disease was largely contained within communities. But had it also spread as bad as it did in Europe to other parts of the world, then things would have been a whole lot worse. Over time, the amount of infected people massively declined, and although it's still out there today, only a few thousand cases a year are reported, and if caught within the first day, antibiotics can prevent death. Historians have said that if the plague peaked a few hundred years later, when travel was much more sophisticated, the impact would have been much more devastating and could well have wiped out the human race. An asteroid destroying Earth. Asteroids are constantly flying around, and you may remember the scare in 2014 when an asteroid the size of Ben Nevis flew past the Earth that had the capability to cause some serious damage. But one of the most recent and closest of all happened in June 2015. NASA were monitoring this monster-sized rock, which measured 1.5 miles across and had a mining worth of 2.2 trillion. The rock was so valuable as it contained nickel, iron, cobalt, water, nitrogen, hydrogen and ammonia. It hurtled past the planet at 45,450 miles per hour, had a very elongated shape and was almost black in appearance. It was 15 times the size of any other asteroid that has passed close to Earth and it caused astronomers and scientists to demand global action to develop a system to destroy or divert asteroids like this if it was likely they were on a collision course with Earth. Although the rock did pass safely at a distance of around 4 million miles, which in space is not actually that far, if it had altered its path just slightly, which was a high possibility, then its destruction to our planet would have been catastrophic, because we simply would not have been able to stop it. When small meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere, they go from travelling through space, which is virtually a vacuum, to now travelling through air, so they burn up due to the resistance the air has on them. But when we're talking in the size of asteroids, like the size of this one, at over 1.5 miles in size, then it would break up, but it would create hundreds of bomb-like rocks that would crush everything in their paths, cause tsunamis across our oceans, earthquakes and global extinction. It's also worrying to hear that NASA have no idea where 98% of meteoroids and asteroids are heading, and sometimes they're only spotted whilst they're passing Earth. Professor Brian Cox once said, there is an asteroid with our name on it and it will hit us. And NASA do agree, but believe one won't hit us for a few hundred years, giving humans time to develop systems to deal with the threat of a total human wipeout by an asteroid. Nuclear warheads. We are all aware of them and their brutal capabilities, that was shown by the destruction caused by the atomic bombs dropped on Japan during World War II. Well, shortly after World War II ended, the scientists who developed the atomic bomb looked at what type of nuclear event would wipe out the entire world, and they concluded that it would only take between 10 and 100 super bombs to put the entire human race to an end. And as scary as it is, there have been a few close calls where an all-out nuclear war was narrowly avoided. The first was in the early hours of January the 25th, 1995, when a team of Norwegian and American scientists launched a four-stage rocket carrying scientific equipment that's air path included the capital city of Russia. During its flight, a Russian radar crew spotted it above the Barents Sea at Russia's northern border. Fearing it was a nuclear warhead heading for the capital, a signal was sent to Russia's nuclear briefcases, which have a 10-minute decision deadline meaning they have 10 minutes to decide whether to launch a nuclear attack or not. Russian President Yeltsin activated his nuclear keys, orders were given to go into a state of combat readiness, and the Russian commanders waited for the order to launch a nuclear war against the US. Just a few minutes before the 10 minute mark, the rocket fell into the sea, and the incident went down in history 
as the first time any nuclear weapon had its briefcase activated and readied for an attack. But this wasn't the only close call, scarily there have also been more, including a faulty message that was sent to the Soviet Union's Nuclear Early Warning Command Center in 1983, which reported that the US had launched five nuclear warheads heading their way. The duty officer at the command center had a feeling it was a false alarm and did not report it. Had he though, there is no doubt that the Soviet would have launched everything they had at the US. If these events would have caused nuclear wars, the bombs at the time would have caused huge destruction and death, but the most destruction would have been the aftermath of such amounts of radiation. The atmosphere would be poisonous and this would result in skyrocketing rates of cancer, birth and genetic defects. The airborne radiation would stay in the air and although not immediate death for the survivors, slowly over time the effects of the fallout would interfere with us, eventually making it impossible to survive, ending human life. To think that the world has the technology to totally annihilate all of us just by a few commands is scary. And what's even scarier is that in 1961 the Tsar, a 57 megaton bomb was built in just 15 weeks. It had 10 times the entire combined firepower expended in World War II, and its seismic wave was measurable after passing three times around the Earth. That is absolutely insane. As far as we know, only one of these have officially been built, but who knows what some countries could be hiding. Let's just hope we don't have any more communication mess-ups in the future. So that's five times we came close to extinction. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and see you next week for five encounters with the Men in Black.